Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining the Charlo versus Hatley media conference call. Your host for today, Lou DiBella, will begin. Thanks, people, for joining us. Um, this is our call to announce the co-feature for Andre Berto versus Sean Porter, the WBC welterweight world title eliminator. That's going to be on Showtime Championship Boxing Live at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, on Saturday, April 22nd. Um, tickets for the live event are on sale now. Um, they can be purchased online at Ticketmaster.com, BarclaysCenter.com, or by calling 1-800-745-3000, 1-800-745-3000. Um, the co-feature is a terrific bout for the WBC Junior Middleweight Championship. Um, Jermel Ironman Charlo, 28-0 with 13 KOs from Houston, Texas, against Charles Hatley, 26-1-1 with 18 KOs from Dallas, Texas. So we got a battle of Texas and Brooklyn on April 22nd. Um, as most of you know, uh, Jermel's brother uh, is Jermal. They're uh, one minute apart, and Jermel's one minute younger. Um, they turned pro in 2007. Uh, Jermel had a great tw record of 56 and 8 as an amateur. Um, has held a number of small titles. Last year, they became the first pair of twins to hold world titles simultaneously in the same weight class. Um, since Jamal has moved up to the 160-pound division, but Jamal will be defending his title in a very tough defense against Charles Hatley in Brooklyn at the Barclays Center on April 22nd. Um, for those who don't know, Charles Hatley is promoted by the illustrious Mr. Don King. Um, we're waiting for Don to hopefully join us on this call. Um, but in the meantime, I will uh, I will acknowledge. Um, I will acknowledge Mr. Hatley and give him an opportunity to say a couple of words um, to everybody. Charles, you want to say a couple of words to the press, please? Yes, uh, Randy, uh, please uh, we'll be there for the fight. Can't wait to put a show on for us. Charles? Hello? Yes. Yeah. And um, Charles' trainer is his uh, is his dad, Gr Greg Hatley. Greg, um, would you like to say a few words? Hello. Yeah, Hello, Greg. Do you want to say a few words? Oh yeah, man. Yeah, man. We just mm -hmm. fight. Looking forward to it, you know. Yeah, for opportunity for the fight. I'm looking forward to it. you want to you want to talk to the press champ? Yeah, of course. Um, hello everybody that's listening, all the viewers. I appreciate you guys for taking the time to be involved and be active with me and my brother. Um, I'm excited to be in the ring again. I know Charles Kelly is excited to obviously get another ch uh, chance to fight for a title if he hasn't already fought for one. I know he uh, hasn't fought in a while. And um, this has actually been my longest layover, but this has been one of the best because I've been able to prepare myself um, physically, mentally, spiritually, and I've been able to adapt and get better, you know. So uh, I'm excited to see what I can bring to the table and what my, a, a better performance than I have done all 28 fights that I've fought. Um, you know, you've been promoting, uh, you've been doing a great job promoting our fights and, uh, you know, doing what you can for the Charlottes. Um And right now it's all about us. It's about being selfish and it's about, taking control of everything that, that the opportunities present. I am the champion. Um, so I've been, I've been here before, and I've stood my grounds before. <clears throat> I've been in the ring where I had to, you know, put my legacy on my back, and that's what I'm doing right here, and I'm doing it again. Yeah, I'm fighting a native from, from, from Texas, but it's two completely different worlds. I live nothing like these guys, and those guys live nothing like me, and it's hard to walk in my shoes, and Charles Kelly will see that. Let me get in the ring on the 22nd. Oh, shit. That's all I got to say. I'm 
know, are we still here? I don't hear nobody talking. I'm here. Yeah. yeah okay. Can we open it for questions, please? I Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions at this time, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, if you have any questions at this time, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. And I'm waiting for callers to join the queue at this present time. Um, our first question, question is going to come from Mitch Aperson from ringtv.com. Um, please go ahead. Uh, thanks a lot. Hey guys, just a question for both fighters. Uh, you, you're both from the Texas area. Have you guys ever, you know, you, you guys ever fight in the amateurs or ever sparred? Do you guys know each other well before this this fight? I mean, I'd rather you ask a question and direct it right to me instead of asking an open question where both people answer. You're gonna have two people talking at the same time. All right, Jamel, if you want to talk first. <laughs> yeah, um, we never fought in the amateur. We we uh, seen each other fight before. He, uh, I was I was a little bit younger than him coming into amateurs, um, and he was older, obviously. So uh, maybe just one era difference. But no, we never fought in amateurs, but uh, we did uh, pay attention closely to what we had in front of us. Carl, same question for you. Just, uh... Charles, can you hear the question? I can't really hear man. Yeah. Um, they they asked if you knew him and if you've ever fought uh, Charlo before, or do you know him or uh, fought as amateurs before? I thought he had been amateur before. Um, I know I've never fought him. Um, like you say, I you saw each other fight a couple times one, and uh, I never never seen him being in the shows before. So it's really like it's just going to be a fight. The fire is there. Lisa, is, is is there a landline that Charles can get to or call from? Because every word's intel unintelligible. Yeah, it's hard to hear. Okay. Um, no, it's impossible to hear. You can't yeah, hear Charles okay. at all. Okay. So. Media, ask Charlo questions, and I will uh, call Mr. Hatley back. Uh, and and well, that's true, Jamel. Does that add a little intrigue and just more spice to the matchup? You know, just both of you guys being from the you know, Texas area. No, um, it don't. It don't. It don't really. It don't really like. This is a fight. You know what I'm saying? This is my life. This is another victim that I gotta. You know, just you know, that's coming to jeopardize my life and my lifestyle. So it's not about where he's from in Texas and none of that. There ain't no robbery. That don't matter to me. I can stand by myself and say, yeah, I am the king of Texas, but we all have some great champions in Texas, so it's not even about – it's not about that. It's deeper than that. Okay, thanks. I appreciate that. So our next question is going to come from Dan Raphael from ESPN. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, hello, Jamel. How are you today? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. Uh, Jamel, my question for you is, and I, if uh, Charles gets back on the call, I'd like to ask him the same question, but I'll start with you, Jamel. Uh, this this is a mandatory fight, and it has been, uh, to my recollection, kind of scheduled several times, rumored for this card, it's supposed to be on that card, gets postponed from this card. Uh, can you just t tell me uh, if there's been any sense of just sort of anxiousness or frustration of finally, you know, or waiting to find out when you'd actually fight and finally knowing for sure it's going to take place April 22nd because I know it was going to be in March at one point on the card uh, with Gary Russell. That was postponed to no fault of your fault because of the opponent that Gary was supposed to fight. But just a, just a general uh, anxiety of just waiting and waiting and waiting to get this, this fight scheduled. Well, I'm uh... – I'm very I'm very humble to know that like you know everything happens for a reason, and with the postponing and things happening, who knows what could have been that real definite reason why this all happened to me, um, and so it, it it didn't happen to me, it happened to us. Um, I am happy to just to get a chance to get back in the ring, show my skills, show knock off the ring rush and have fun at the same time and do what I love to do. So that's the anxiety, but you know, just being back in the ring, everything else, everything, everything else falls in place. Um, and um, you know, thank God I set myself up for my, you know, set myself up to where you know I can 
have a future outside of boxing as well. So, you know, when things like this do take place, you're able to still be comfortable. You know, so when you, when, mm -hmm. when you won the title, uh, the vacant title against Jackson uh, in May of last year, I mean, it was, it, was a, it was a good fight. You came back, scored a nice knockout in the eighth round, and anytime you get a, a knockout like that and, and win a world title, you know, it sort of gives you momentum. Do you feel like because that was such a long time ago that, that the semblance of momentum, maybe the, the, your name being on the tip of uh, the tongue of fight fans, maybe you, know, you lost a little bit of that because of the layoff and because, again, not through your own fault, but because mandatory fights and schedules and injuries and all that kind of stuff sometimes back things up and take a while to get scheduled? Do you, do you feel like you lost a little bit of that momentum? No, nah, my arm's still there. I'm still fired. I'm still hungry. I'm hungrier now, obviously, because y'all they made me wait so long. But other than that, I'm still hungry. I'm still fired. I can't. I can't care about what these people think and they're judging me, or or how they feel, or if I'm not relevant to them anymore. I know what I'm doing. I know how I'm living, and I know how I'm getting ready to fight. So it's like nothing else that I could do, uh, other than just continue to try to be great in the ring and please these fans and, and be satisfying to to my peers and my judges and my family. Now, if I remember correctly, there was one fight that your brother won, and Charles Halley, I guess, was at the fight because you and your brother are twins, obviously, thought that your brother was you, <laughs> jumped in the ring and started getting in your brother's face. Is that, uh, do I have that right? And, and if so, what did, what did you make of that sort of like, you know, clearly a publicity stunt move, but he got it wrong and went after the wrong guy, which kind of made him look like a little bit of a kind of a fool. Well, that's, that's, see, that's once again somebody else's decision. I mean, I don't care about that. That, that was a, I mean, if you want me to hold that as a hostile moment for, for what I'm finna get ready to do to him, I guess you can say that. But I'm not, nah, that's not something that's on the back of my mind. I care less about that. Yeah, you jumped in the ring and you almost caused something, you almost started something or caused something to be worse than what it is, all because you're trying to really just put on a front. Put that front on somewhere else, but it's just certain people who you put that front on with. And, and that's I'm glad nothing erupted even crazier because we got different types of people in our life that that don't allow stuff like that to happen. And so we'll, um, I'm glad that nothing else got it, it didn't get any dangerous or serious than that. But uh, however, uh, he does have to um, eat a few jabs to the mouth for that. So, you know. <laughs> well, here's the, the other thing though. When, when after that situation was over, I was wondering if at any point after the fact. Did you and your brother sort of ever have like a laugh about it? Like, you know, could you believe what happened? And, you know, because it was kind of funny if you're just watching from the outside, maybe not to you guys, but as an observer, it was sort of like, oh my goodness, what's going on? Did you guys ever kind of kind of joke around about it a little bit? So we laughed on the plane and that was it. We was like, look at this clown. I mean, we so used to stuff like that with, you know, different people in the industry. They, you know, they don't know us apart. So, I mean, I've been dealing with that all my life. So we kind of had a little sympathetic, like, oh, okay, he did not know us apart, but at the same time, wait up, you disrespected us. But at the same time, you did it with your promoter. So it was kind of like so many different things that you had to ask this, you had to look at it. If, uh, if, I, if I was to look at it from a, a fighter killer aspect, yeah, you, you got problems. You did that and you're wrong for it, you got problems. So I'm going to make you pay. But if I think of it as a business or a win, that's not. Uh, All right, very good. Uh, Jamal, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. And uh, uh, Lisa, if uh, Charles gets back uh, on the phone, I'll punch in again for some questions. Okay, great. Um, he's supposed to be calling in right now. I'm getting the, the word. So we can take the next question, and then we can circle back. Also, Derek James, um, Jamel's trainer, is also on the phone with us if anyone has any questions for, for Derek. Our next question is going to come from Lynn Satterfield from Premier Boxing. Please go ahead. Hey, Jamel. How you doing? I'm good. Good. Um, Jamel, you talked about everything. Hi. I can't hear now. You said. Okay. You said that everything happens for in terms of the postponement. I can't help but wonder if it's convenient and kind of prophetic that you and Errol Spence are both training right now for fights and. I wonder what the intensity is like in that in that environment, and also I know you guys have sparred. How has that sharpened your skills and upped your game and increased your intensity for this fight? Well, that's what I got to come out and show you guys. Um, I'm excited. I've been working with Earl. He's a great fighter. Um, Earl is very dominant. I love everything. He's doing. And we we both we both around the same age, so we both keep each other. Um, 
Uh, I don't need to play phone, but however, you know it's 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 been good training with Earl. We got Coach Jerry, we got Robert Brand, we got you know it's so many fighters, so many talents, so much talent, so many undefeated fighters. So I believe uh, you know when they come down to April twenty second, I'll be able to show some of the same things that we we taught each other. And and circling back just a little bit to the fact that you know, you've had to listen to, or maybe you haven't listened to, you know, he's been talking a lot um, over this last, what will be 11 months. Um, How, given what you're doing against Errol and the the kind of sharpness, uh, I understand, and maybe Derek can weigh in on this, how anxious are you to put hands on him? I mean, I'm just as anxious as any fight, you know. I'm calm. I'm a really patient person, and and I'm happy about my opportunity. I'm taking every moment, like, you know, every moment very serious. And so, uh, um, you know, just, just you guys are seeing, like you said, Coach Derek can weigh in on it. Um, you know, those things brings a lot to my, uh, a lot to my, my repertoire. Derek, can you weigh in on that, too? So, you know, it, it, it's funny because, you know, I've been training to Jamel for, like, almost two years. And they never – I like it to where I give everybody their own personal private time when they train. So we never really trained together. But for this fight, I felt like I wanted Jamel to get to another level, be more focused, and uh, be pushed to where when he's in the ring with a guy like Charles Hadley that he was in the ring getting prepared by, you know, um, Earl Spitz. So hopefully it'll be a lot easier, a lot different. So two different levels of fighters. And so um, with this being said, um, they're very anxious. I'm not not really anxious, just ready for the fight to happen. I mean, like, you have something that's in front of you just lingering, kind of want to get it over so you can move forward and get ready for the next one or whatever. So that's basically been my focus. And um, But Jamel and Errol sparring raises them up to a whole nother level. I mean, um, it's not even, you know, it's really, you know, like it's one thing to be a good fighter, but to be one of the best fighters in the world most technically sound fighters in the world and um to help and to help each other get ready is, is phenomenal. And one more thing for you, Derek. I understand that um uh Errol has sparred Charles Hatley. Can you characterize how that was? I think it was a number of years ago and, and, and how did that go? Did Errol and him were they even or was it a dominant situation or what 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 happened there? Well it was um it was um you know first time I saw him squad was pretty decent, you know. Pretty, pretty, pretty decent, but the, but the times, the two other times after that, because they've only spent three times since I was trained them, and the first time was pretty decent. The last two times were like, um, you know, as as Errol likes to say, if everybody knows slogan or his motto, you know, so um, that's what it is, and that was it. We never sparred with him again because it was like um, it was not so competitive, so it was like, you know, when necessary. Was it a knockout? <laughs> I told you what he always. What is his motto? You tell me what his motto is. Man down. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean? Oh man, I'm about to it. It didn't go the whole way. It didn't go the whole way, you know. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Good luck in the fight. Hello. Hey, Hallie's back on the phone. There you go. Charles Hatley's on the phone, everyone. If you'd like Charles. to. Yeah, 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 I heard I heard everything that was um, being said, which wasn't true. Um, I swear, I saw Earl tremendous of times. And, um, yeah, we worked several times, and he down, he, he right. Whatever he want to say, man, down, that, that, that definitely ain't true. Um, I got, I got footage, I got footage of us sparring. And, however, however, if I told, I told Derek, I told him whenever they like to come back, hey, they welcome back whenever. They know where I'm at. And um, I never seen him again. Well, I said since I've been training him is what I said. If you hear what I said, I mean, we sparred three times since, since I've been since training, you've been training him. him. Since you've been training him, we've sparred more than three times. Yeah, right? yeah, just three, just three times. It, I, like I said, um, I told you, I told, I told him whenever he wants to come back, whenever you want to come back, come on. And I haven't seen y'all since. Uh, so what do that mean? It wasn't worth the time, man. What? 
it was it wasn't competitive. It wasn't, nah, competitive. It wasn't competitive. Ask him that. Ask him that. What do you mean ask him that? They stopped it. You got stopped. Jerry, 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 I done stopped you before. I done stopped you. You stopped. Before. Are you for real? I done stopped you before. You know that. My dad used to know you. We used to spoil you all the time. I done stopped you before, uh, and you know that. Well, we want to live in a la la land. Okay. Go ahead. No, I had that on tape as well. All right. I'll put that footage out as well then. I got a lot and ladies of and gentlemen, And ladies and gentlemen, if you have a question, please yeah. press star one on your telephone keypad. Oh, I got a lot of footage with Earl, too. A lot of footage, footage with him. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you want to say, man, down. He, I, I can put that up. Put it up whenever you're ready. I'm ready to put mine up. So, you can start it. Exactly. Don't lie. Next, next question for one of the other, please. Um, our next question is going to come from Eddie Goldman from No Holds Bar. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. First question for Jamel. You fought uh, both veterans and, and younger fighters like uh, Jackson, and you fought veterans like Alcine and Marta Rosian. Charles has been fighting recently much more veteran fighters like Mundine and Roman. How do you rate him as an opponent compared to the other opponents that you've had? Oh, I give everybody a chance. It's not. It's not a. Uh, it's nothing overlooked. He has never fought near the competition I fought in, as a professional. Um, was done in the amateurs. That book is closed. I'm a different individual. I'm a stronger fighter, smarter fighter, fast fighter. He knows what he has in front of him. Um, so um, it's really about me getting in there, doing what I have to do, and being at my best at doing it. I don't care about who he fought, who he sparred, who he stopped, who stopped him. None of that matters to me. Every every opponent, every victim has a different way of coming at you. So uh, we all got our different DNAs, and this is one thing. So. What do you see as your advantages over him? I, I mean, I, I might have several. I really don't want to speak on the advantages that I have. Um, I have several, though. Okay, and a question for Charles. Could you talk a little bit about uh, the layoff because you didn't fight in 2016, and you know it's going to be about well over a year till you're going to get back in the ring for this fight. Yeah, well, the layoff was good for me. Um, I actually was needing the layoff because I was I was so busy at the time, and um, I actually needed the layoff. But I was I actually thought we were going to fight three months after he won the title. And it just kept going back, pushing, pushing it back further and further. And um, I was, I was steady training for it, you know. So I, I was, I was, I'm well prepared for it a while back. I never stopped training for it. How do you compare him with your other opponents that you faced? Do you consider him to be the toughest fighter you've ever, you can ever face? No, I can't say that. Uh, he's a great fighter. And he's coming to win just like I am, but he's never been to a test that he he's going to get because um I'm sure I'm sure he he fought several fighters that they knew he was going to win against, but this this fight here they don't know that he's going to win, and I'm sure he's questioning himself right now if he's going to win because I'm coming to the table to do what I gotta do and that's bring the belt back to my city. I'm well prepared for it, and um. I'm ready to fight at the end of the day. The talking, the back and forth talking, I'm really not about all of that. I'm really about getting in the ring and doing what I said I'm going to do. Do either of you want to make a uh, prediction for the fight, uh, Jer- Jamel first? No, I'm not making any prediction. I'm coming to win. Okay, and Charles, would you like to make a prediction? She said it clearly. I'm, I'm, I'm ready and I'm coming to win, man. So I made the best man win. Okay, thank you. Good luck to everybody. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions at this time, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, if you have any questions at this time, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Our next question is going to come from Dan Raphael from ESPN. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, I wanted to follow up with some questions for Charles uh, since you were off the call there for a few minutes. Uh, Charles, good to talk to you. Uh, 
my question for you is, uh, you know, you've got the nine victories in a row. Um, your last fight, obviously, was your biggest win, uh, as I see it on your record, uh, going down to Australia, scoring a knockout against Anthony Mundine, a very experienced fighter, a former champion. Can you can you uh, give me your perspective on what it was like for you to make that long trip, uh, go into his home area, his fans, everything against you, and uh, and do what you did in that fight against a, a well-known opponent? Well, I went to Australia with two things against you, um, but just Everything is against me, and I'm actually going. I actually feel like it's another Australia fight, you know. Um, I'm just I'm focused, I'm ready, and I'm prepared for it, for whatever is coming. And when I get in the ring, I'm going to show that it will be like an Australia fight. When you went to Australia, did, did what what did what did going into sort of the, the Lions Den, so to speak, teach you about yourself as far as how you could deal with uh, that kind of atmosphere, that kind of situation? Uh, well, I, I made it real easy. I, I stuck to what we had been training for. You know, I knew we were going overseas, and I knew he was a great fighter. But I, I, I kept everything, everything that what we've been training again. I kept it at and I went in and dominated the fight. The whole fight. Now, another question I had for you is, uh, and I asked also this to uh, to Jamel earlier, uh, this mandatory fight has sort of been a schedule for one card or another. It's been shifted to different months. You know, it's going to be on this card, uh, going to be on that card. Uh, it took a while to get it settled. When it was supposed to be in, in, uh, in March, it was uh, delayed because of the uh, main event opponent got injured, and so it caused your fight to be canceled. Can you, can you explain to me if you've had any sort of frustration about having to wait so long to get this fight settled and finally squared away on a particular date where you knew you were training for an exact date or were you just kind of roll with the punches and whenever it was settled, it was settled? Yeah, I don't really know what the issue was while I didn't fight, but I just know what the rumors was. But, uh, yeah, I was prepared to fight in September, and they prolonged it all the way until March. But the whole time, I know it was September, February, then March. Then back to April, which I didn't care if it was next year. As long as I got the fight, I was going to be ready. Right. Um, when you were at the at, at uh, his brother's fight not that long ago, and you went into the ring after the fight, it was kind of, kind of a funny scene because you, you were confronting the wrong guy. Can you just take me through what happened with that? Exactly. What, what, and what made you do I'm that? Sure, I'm sure he could. I'm sure Jamel could tell you as well. That this is true. They tried to make me look like the bad guy. I was in the ring um, to um, to talk after he finished, and and um, he looked over to me and he said, "Well, this who is this guy?" He pushed me first, and then when he pushed me, I pushed him back, and that's where everybody they got most of the part when I was pushing him, and everybody felt like um, I pushed him and he didn't push me, but. Jamel can, I'm sure he can tell you as well that if he's being honest, he'll tell you that, you know, his brother pushed me first and then I pushed him back. But which is don't matter. You know, they try to make me like the bad guy so I can be the bad guy for this fight. I don't, it don't matter. It's cool. I'm willing to do do whatever I got to do and be whoever I have to be. As long as I come back with that victory, that's what I'm going to do. Well, why were you going into the ring? It wasn't your fight. You were not involved in that particular fight. Was it? Were you just trying to kind of hype up your mandatory fight for the title? No, no. Um, everyone probably thought it was staged and all, but no, I was told to come in to do an interview because okay. I was supposed to go on one after um, Jamel fight, but um, Dunn wasn't there, and no one told me to come up and do an interview, so they told me after his brother fought, then go up in the ring and do my interview, and that's when everything took place. I got you. Okay. Appreciate your explanation on that. Uh, thank you very much for your time. You too, Jamel, and good luck to both of you guys. Yep. Thank you. Our next question is going to come from Ron Satterfer from Premier Boxing. Please go ahead. Uh, okay. Hey, Charles, thanks for uh, joining the call. I know you uh, you were listening in when I was asking my questions of Jamel. Um, I understand that you sparred with John Jackson um, to help him prepare for Jamel, and I wanted to know if during that and then watching the fight, you gained anything from both sparring and then watching what success he had uh, against Jamel. I understand you you feel that the Charlos can't handle certain movements. Um, to be honest, um, 
I barely even spent any time with um, John, John Jackson in the amateurs. I saw him a couple of times, but that's the only time I ever ran John Jackson. I never sparred him for anyone's fight. Okay. Never, okay. Yeah. I never sparred him for a female fight. But did you gain yeah. anything from, from watching? Because I know you've expressed, uh, I've seen different interviews where you felt, you know, that the in your estimation – that the Charlos uh, have problems with guys who move? Um, I learned from every fight. No matter who is fighting, I learned from every fight, and that's what I'm here to do is learn. But as far as watching what went on in that fight, I, I really wasn't paying much attention to it because I was just – I didn't know who was going to win. So it wasn't that I had to watch this and watch that on that fight. I just have to be prepared to do what I have to do. I have to worry about me, no one else. Mm-hmm. And can you characterize, you talked about, um, I mean, you seem to take exception to the characterization of your sparring sessions with with um, with Errol. Um, what what exactly were you uh, referring to, and, and what is your take on, on that representation? When Errol, when Errol came to spar, man, we worked. I'm not, I'm not in here to beat no one up when I'm sparring. I'm in to get work. You know, a lot of people, it's a lot of hate in the game, you know, um, like I said, I've been beating Derrick James up since we were amateurs, and he knows that. And that's probably why he's upset right now and saying the thing that he's saying, but none of it is true. And um, that's probably, like I say, me and Earl, we come, when, when he comes, we come to work. We come to, to help each other, not to hurt each other. But mm-hmm. I guess on Derrick King, he probably was telling him, hey, kill him, hurt him, kill him, hurt him. You know, but like I say, when I'm in a when I'm in a ring sparring with the um the fighter that comes over to spar, I help them no matter who it is. I come when they come, I help them. Okay, and then I guess my last question is: How far are you removed um, mentally from the knockout loss to Tyner? And you were at 146. Did did the weight have anything to do with it? Because um, I mean, the weight played the, the, the weight played a big part of it, but I was actually injured. I shouldn't even fall. I had just came off of, um, ACL surgery two months before the fight, and the doctor told me not to fight for a whole year. But um, I knew the time. I knew he was trash, a bum, and he wasn't on my level. So I was, I was eager to fight. I couldn't wait to fight, you know. So I told my dad, yeah, let's do it. And that's what happened when you think you know everything. You know, accidents happen. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I actually tried to fight him several times afterwards. I told my dad I wasn't fighting again, you know, mm-hmm. until I fight him, fought him, and, and and he didn't want to fight. Okay, and then you, you said you have not, you have not sparred John Jackson. Um, right, I didn't. No, I did not spar John Jackson for the uh, fight. How about how about for this fight? For this fight, um, yeah, I worked with him a little bit. We did a little work. Come on, come on, shed some light on it. <laughs> How yeah, many, how many so rounds? Jackson. How often? He's, he's a great John fighter. Jackson, what did John he's Jackson tell you about Jamel? He's a great fighter, man. He works. <laughs> Just know I'm going to prepare for this fight. Just know that much. Okay. Well, listen, thank you so much for your time. I truly appreciate it. Our last question is going to come from Desenio Lewis, Jr. from Black Star News, Manhattan. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, Los you Black Star News. Jamel, uh, first of all, as a belated congratulations on you winning your 54-pound crown. Uh, you duplicated what your brother did and uh, something in history that the twins winning titles in the same weight division. But the question here is this, that uh, it's my understanding that your brother uh, did not get too much of a chance to enjoy being a 54-pound champ because he moved up to 60. Now he's an uh, next champ, uh, and I and I read where it was weight consideration. Correct me if I'm wrong, but then uh, I'm wondering whether you also may not get a chance to enjoy being a 54 pound champ uh, to, for too long because you, being that the DNA is the same, may have to move up and uh, into the 60s where you have all the three Gs and Danny Jacobs who almost scored a major upset last week and Canelo and. Uh, all, uh, all these other middleweights. So are are you concerned about that, about having to move up without cleaning up the division? Um, nah, so 
that was a major business move plus a career move plus a it's, it's a massive move. Um, I'm domaining at 54. I make 54 easy. Um, I am getting bigger. It has been a year yes. since I fought. Uh, I'm getting stronger. I'm getting wiser. I know a lot of people have been seeing videos of, of me training over in California. Mm-hmm. Um, but everything has been great. I'm, I'm, I'll be on weight. It won't be a struggle. It has never been a struggle, so I don't think it will continue to be. It, it will it will build up a struggle. Um, making 154 is easy. Moving up to 160 is where I want my brother to right now take our take take the Charlo's name and push it up to the top. I'm glad yes. he's going number two out of WBC. And um, I'm going to try to unify at this weight division before I decide to move up. I see. Uh, being that this is, correct me if I'm wrong, that this is your first title defense, uh, are you doing, without giving out any trade secrets, anything extra above what you're doing because you have a reputation like your brother being gym rats and you work hard every day, but being that this is your title, first title defense and you want to look good, anything extra without giving out trade all secrets? I gotta do, all I got to do is just train harder than I trained before, listen mm-hmm. more, learn more, and, and be great. I, it's nothing about... Um, anything to, to, to do with uh, my brother, you know what I'm saying? My brother did what he had to do in the end of the way he did. He right. trained hard. We are gym reps. We work hard. Charles Sally know I work hard. Mm-hmm. Um, you, it's not just getting that running in, running in, trying to, it's not it's not the amateur. You can't just come in there throwing punches like you want to. You you pay for all your mistakes and everything happens for a reason. So I'm excited for this fight, April 22nd. I'm excited to be in Brooklyn for the first time fighting in Brooklyn, yes. not even in the amateur style fighting in Brooklyn. So, this will be my first time at the Barclay, and I'm happy. I'm excited. It's gonna. It's big to me. It's not. This fight is not in Vegas. It's not in California. It's right. not in Texas. It's not in Florida. It's actually in New York. So this is big to me. This is different. And um, me and my stable mate and my coaches, my trainers, we all working together, and we we we're, we're planning um, to have an exciting night. Right. Uh, so welcome to Brooklyn. <laughs> I'll see you there. But uh, now, now the next the next question for Charles Hatley. Charles Hatley. <laughs> Uh, congratulations on getting a title shot. Uh, are you a little anxious in a sense? Is there some experience in your career being that you're 31 already and uh, and uh, Ch- Charlo's only 26, he's a young man, that you finally got a title shot that you have to do the best you can to finally make up for maybe lost years. You didn't fight last year at all. So this is like a a, a, a more intense push so you can be successful uh, in the in this title, this title fight. Yeah, like I said, none of the time hurt me or anything. I needed that break. Mm-hmm. But I, haven't, I haven't even reached, reached my prime yet. Right, I see. I'm a hard worker. Mm-hmm. Jamel can tell you that. You know, uh, I'm strong. Mm-hmm. Not many guys can stand up for my front. Right. I'm sure Derek, I'm sure Derek and um, Jamel can tell you that. Um, but um, like you, like he was saying. The fight, the fight is um, April twenty second, and I like to do all my talking in the ring. I see. Uh, you you have an extensive, very impressive amateur record. Uh, two fifty, I believe, wins and only twelve losses, and a two thousand eight Olympian. Uh, in terms of experience, worldwide experience, when you turn pro, was was, was it just an easy transitional, uh, just getting rid of the head guard and the t-shirts and just walking into a ring where you'll be fighting, where we will be fighting four rounders instead of the three, and as, it became easy as it went along. I couldn't wait to turn pro, to be honest. I couldn't mm-hmm. wait, but um, the guys I fought in the pro, right? Can't, I mean, the amateurs, the guys mm-hmm. I fought in the amateurs can't be compared. right. Guy that you know he he's fought in the in the in the pro career. Oh, um, I fought all the top guys, really. Yes. So right now, I fought all of them in, uh, in mm. Amsterdam. Right. The to, um, to Super Bowl, so, you know, I fought them all, and and they can tell you what I did. And and, and I'm sure, like I said, I'm sure he knows what what he's up against. I, I mean, but are you still are you still basing your career your pro career off of? Off of what you did in the amateurs. Exactly. I'm focused. You know, I say, I'm, I'm, you know what you I'm living a dream of my amateurs. Can't hear you. We pros. I said, you living a dream off of amateurs. We pros now. So, I, mean, are you still, I see. Yeah. Are you still banking on what you did in the amateurs? It sounds like you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, fellas. Uh, save the fighting for April twenty second. God bless all both of you and Godspeed and and oh, as I say, the better man wins. But I'm uh, welcome to New York and 
please give us a good fight. God bless all of you. Thank you. Thank, and thanks for the promoters for bringing such a great fight to New York. Thank you. Yeah, no questions. Okay, that was our last question. Lou? Hello? Yep, I'm here. That was our last question. Okay, okay. Thank you very much for everything. Um, see y'all thank, you, th- thank you, Jamel, for joining us. And uh, thank you, Charles, for joining us. And, um, you know, this is a terrific co-feature on Showtime Championship Boxing. Again, uh, the show starts at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time at the Barclay Center in Brooklyn, Saturday, April 22nd. Get your tickets now, barclaycenter.com, ticketmaster.com, or call 1-800-745-3000. And Jermel and, and Charles, we look forward to seeing you in Brooklyn. All right, thank you. I would like to say thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for all joining. You may disconnect and have a great day.